Hey everyone. Have you ever heard about analytics engineering? Do you really know the importance of this career in a data ecosystem? Have you ever wondered which tools and AWS services analytics engineers use to solve real world problems? Well, I'm Thiago Panini, and today I'm going to provide you answers to all those questions and much more. So before we begin, let's share some things about myself. As you can imagine, I do work as an analytics engineer, and I have a leadership position in Itaú, one of the largest banks in Brazil. And I've been part of the AWS Community Builder program since 2023. This is my second year as a builder, and thanks for being here. So this is not my first time at reInvent, but it's the first one I participate as a speaker. I'm two times AWS certified, and I really love to share things with community. And I maintain over 10 open source projects in my GitHub profile that I'll share with you at the end of this presentation. So here we have our agenda. And as you can see, we have a lot of topics to discuss, starting by the definition of what is analytics engineering, its skill set, a more practical view of analytics engineers acting to solve real-world problems in a financial company, and in the end, we'll talk about the future of the career. So first topic, what is analytics engineering? In this moment, I want you to think in the most common data disciplines in careers and data organizations. What comes in mind? In this exercise, Let's bring to the table the software engineer, the data engineer, the data scientist, and the data analyst. If we would split them from the point of view of data production and consumption, we could say that software engineers and data engineers are more like data producers. They produce data, while data scientists and data analysts are more like data consumers. For a certain time, a company with those disciplines could work very well in many data challenges. But as challenges evolved and teams needed to improve efficiency, it became clear that there was a huge gap between those who produce data and those who consume data. And this gap is the key point of what we discuss today. One of the straightforward effects of this gap was reviewed on Anaconda's 2022 State of Data Science, that as well-known survey. The research showed that data science spent a lot of time on data preparation and data visualization steps, investing almost 70% of their time on those tasks. Only a small portion of their time was dedicated to data science-specific tasks, such as model training, model selection, and model deployment. At that point, the huge question was, how companies could shed a light on that situation? How that problem could be addressed? Well, by now, I think we have decoded the message. The modern data world claimed for the existence of a new data career that could work in both data production and consumption worlds as the link between software engineers and data engineers and data scientists and data analysts. Of course, I'm talking about the analytics engineering career and its important mission to help companies to extract value from data. So to get a better idea of how analytics engineers can help companies by reducing the gap between other data careers, I want to share with you some of the best analogies I found on this team. It's the cupboard story, and it was first introduced by Sarah Barnes, a former analytics engineer at HubSpot. The idea behind this story is to explain the main differences between data engineers, analytics engineers, and data analysts in a final goal that is to simply make a cup of tea. So the story starts pointing that data engineers are those who build the cupboard. They gather the wood and the tools and put it together, like this fancy animation here on the right. Just after that, analytics engineers open the cupboard 
and start putting plates, mugs, and bowls, and arrange them in a certain order that can be by size, color, or even type. In essence, analytics engineers are those who organize the cupboard in a logical way that somehow makes sense for those who need to use it. And users can be data analysts. They know everything lives as it's arranged nicely. They can go to the cupboard and then grab the small blue mug they were looking for and make a delicious cup of tea. Make sense? So now that we've got a better idea of what is an analytics engineer and, and the main differences between other data careers, let's take a look at the skill set. Starting by the hard skills. Here we have. It's important to mention that analytics engineering is not only about analytics and neither only about engineering. It demands knowledge from both topics. That's why big data is one of the most important skills for analytics engineers. As we are working on specializing huge data sets, it's really important to be familiar with distributed storage and parallel processing. Programming languages are also important for daily challenges, such as building SQL queries, Python programs, and Spark applications. As we agree that cloud computing is a mandatory skill, it's important to know how to interact with cloud resources using code. Terraform and cloud formation can be good friends. Statistics can help with data scientists, such as building features and feature groups to be used in modeling steps. Data viz and data storytelling are core concepts for analytics engineers. Sometimes the best way to tell, the best way to explain a point is through a dashboard or a story. And analytics engineers are telling stories with data almost all the time. And of course, all of that means nothing without a business knowledge. It's really important why we are building things and we, we don't want to build data sets that are never touched or dashboards that are never used. So, hard skills are important, but they, but they, but they are not the only ones. Here we have some, some uh, soft skills that can help analytics engineers in many situations, such as communication, conflict solving, creativity, and critical thinking. And of course, we couldn't finish this topic without talking about AWS services commonly used by analytics engineers. Here we have some examples grouped by category. For analytics service, we have Glue, EMR, Athena, Redshift, QuickSight, and Kinesis. For orchestration, we have Event Bridge and Step Functions. For storage, we have S3. For security, we have IAM, Secrets Manager, and KMS. And there are some additional services that are not core for the career, but can help in many situations, such as Lambda, ECS, VPC, LakeFormation, SageMaker, RGS, and DynamoDB. So let's take a more practical view on analytics engineers acting to solve real world problems. Let's look at Itaú as a huge financial company that built a strong analytics engineering team. So as I said, Itaú is one of the largest banks in Brazil. It's the most valuable brand in South America and it has 8.4 billion in brand value. It's located in 18 countries around the world and it has almost 100K employees working for customers. So, Itaú is a strong AWS partner, and for sure, AWS helped Itaú to build a consistent data platform. In Itaú, we adopted the data mesh architecture, where we have DevOps, or producer accounts, on the left, user or consumer accounts on the right, both guided by a con central control plane account, with lake formation support, governance, and everything that is needed to run this ecosystem. But how can analytics engineers get into the game and use AWS in a real world situation? So let's move to our fourth topic where we'll see this in practice. 
So let's start with a simple question. Do data scientists have good data? To explore this topic, let's consider the data mesh architecture we saw on previous slides, where producer accounts on the left, consumer accounts on the right, and a control plane account in the middle. The S3 buckets here are just representations of the three different data layers. SOAR means system of record, raw or bronze data. SOT means source of truth or silver layer. And SPEC means specialized or gold data. So imagine that you have in producer accounts data engineers working to produce data on SOAR and SOT layers. On the other side, we have data science consuming the data produced by data engineers to build machine learning models. In this approach, we can have some challenges. The first one, the data preparation problem. As we saw on Anaconda's research, this approach leverages data science to spend a lot of time preparing data. The second one, complex pipelines for data science. After preparing data and building features, data scientists may want to put those features into production, but this is not an easy step. And the last one, lead time to production. All of that have a huge impact on the time to put features and machine learning models into production. So, what if we can add a key element on this diagram. In this new scenario, we have analytics engineers sitting next to data science and data engineers to enable, to enable better data in the specialized layer. With this approach, we can have some benefits, such as problem understanding. As, we, as I said, analytics engineers can work in both worlds. So we can, say that, we can say that business problems can be better translated into the tech language. Second one, taking data into production. Analytics engineers can help data science to fill the specialized layer with good features. And we know that good features equals to good models. So by using the provided feature groups, Data science can build better machine learning models with confidence. So we move from this to this, simply by adding analytics engineers in the pipeline. But let's go deeper. From a technical perspective, this is an example of a solution that can be built by analytics engineers to help any data team in an organization to specialize data. So in this example, we can have a GitHub repo with data and configuration contracts that can be read by Terraform modules to deploy cloud resources. And resources can be such as tab functions workflow that is triggered by an inventory bridge rule that runs different glue jobs to process data, to measure data quality, and data drift. The result is then written in the specialized layer and available to our organization. So what about the future? What can we expect for their analytics engineering career? Well, it's important to mention that we are living in a new and exciting AI era. We have seen a lot of sessions in re-event talking about new AI services, such as Amazon Q and Amazon Bedrock. And I truly believe that we will live in a world that analytics engineers use AI tools to impact business with data. From a personal point of view, I believe that analytics engineers will be the ones who build tech products to be used by data teams, especially the ones who need to consume data and to take business decisions from data. That's why I think analytics engineering can be the hottest career for the next years. Well, just to recap what we've seen, 
We look at our problems in old-fashioned data teams. We define the analytics engineering as a career that empowers teams with data to be used in business decisions. We discussed hard and soft skills needed to be an analytics engineer. We look at over Itaú and how this huge financial company has a strong analytics engineering team that uses AWS to solve real world problems and excuse the future of the career in this AI era. That's all. Thank you very much. It was really nice to be here. And I hope you appreciate it.